Hello, hello, happy Wednesday, everybody. Hello. I am excited because for the first time, I think maybe the first time in this entire challenge, it's actually sunny and bright outside, which is what we want when we're painting. So super glad about that. Say hello in the comments or give a thumbs up or a wave. Where's everybody watching from today? Who's here? Where are you watching from? What has been your favorite flower lesson so far? There it is. Okay. I'm going to bring this down. So, cornflower. Who can tell me what is the first thing that we do when we're drawing a new flower? There's a couple right answers. I have like one, one thing that I'm thinking, but there's a couple right answers. Who can tell me? Oh, and also, I'm back to using my my little china plate of, of old blue paint, because why not? You can turn anything into a palette. I love my palette, especially when I travel, but the truth is you don't actually need any kind of fancy palette to paint. You can use anything. They even sell palette paper that you can just rip off and throw away when you're done. Um, we are going to need water in a minute, and here's my Sharpie. Okay, so what's one of the first things we do? Sandy says break down the shapes. Lori says practice the parts. Exactly, those are both right. So when we're doing the cornflower shape, overall, the shape of it is an ellipse. I think by now you probably are realizing that lots of flowers have that elliptical or circle shape. So from the top, it would look like this. Now, for a cornflower... Unlike a Sunflower or a Cosmo or a Black Eyed Susan, there's not really like a specific amount of petals, so you don't need to draw all of the rays through, but I think these guidelines are still helpful to kind of have a rough idea of where your petals are going to go. Uh, and because there's so many of them and they overlap, uh, I think that the, the individual rays aren't quite as important. But again, these guidelines are important to know where we start our petals and where we end our petals. So that's where the petals are gonna go, and let's just take a quick look at the petals. Uh, most of them are kinda like three-pronged, like that, okay? But if you don't feel comfortable just freehanding that, there's, there's ways you can break it down. So you have your center line, and then you can just draw out two lines like that, and your petals are gonna go around them, okay? Some cornflower petals have five. So same thing, you can draw the lines like that and then just go around them to get the petal looking like that, okay? Um, let's do that again. I didn't like that one that much, so I'm just gonna do this again. I want it sticking out a little bit more. So, yeah, more like that. Okay. From the side, it's it's pretty simple because we're not going to do too much detail because really when we draw this, it's just going to be um, the illusion of it. But what I am going to do is add a little bit of perspective. So that one right here, this middle line, is a lot closer and this one is a lot wider. And then when we draw that shape in, it makes it look like it is coming towards us, right? Because it's larger on this side and smaller on this side. So from the other side to do that, just want these lines to be very close together and these lines to be a bit more spaced out. Okay, so it looks like it's coming out of the side a little bit. It's pretty easy. It's a pretty simple one once you break it down. And then in the center, what we're going to have is a bunch of, um, like I don't know if it's stamen, if these are stamen, but those little squiggly parts that come out of the center. Um, and we can apply some perspective to that as well and kind of go around the flower. So they're not all pointing the same way, but they're all kind of going in different directions. And then as they work their way in, these are just a bunch of little U-shapes. They get a little bit smaller. Okay, so you still do have a little bit of perspective like that. So you can just practice making these out in different directions. And all of them, all of the openings are pointed right to the center. Okay, so then you can start to draw your petals in. 
and you're just using those guidelines roughly. It's not going to be exact. Okay, and this one is from overhead. And what I like to do is kind of stagger where I'm putting my first ones because there's so many layers. You want to be able to go back and put something behind it, behind this one. So you just kind of stagger it. And then when you go behind it, you lift up when you get to that pedal, hover over it, and then put your pen down again when you get to the other side. Okay. So here I get to that one. I'm gonna and that I'm gonna lift up, hover over it, and then put it down on the other side. And that gives us um, I call that ghosting the lines in, and that just gives us better perspective so that it doesn't look like a petal is just floating in the air or something. Okay, so some of these I'm putting three little pointy parts, some of them have a little bit more than that. Do five on this one, and you can draw each of those guidelines that we did over here if you need to, to start with. I'm just freehanding this in, but I'm using those, those guidelines, the circles. Okay, and there is a cone flower from the top. We would have our stem coming out of there, and they have very thin little leaves. Okay, pretty simple. Now, from the side, we're still going to do our general shapes, um, and this is going to look more like an oval, and then it has a bit of a bulb coming down from it. Okay, and then the stem would come out of there. And then what I want you to do for this guideline is you're going to draw another pencil line roughly there. Okay, so that's about a quarter of the way, or you could do a third of the way up. And what that one is for is that any petals you draw below this line are going to be pointed down. Okay, and then any petals you draw above that line are going to be pointed up. Okay, and then we're going to have our larger ones back here. Okay, and we're just really giving rough lines. Okay, and that guideline, and again, guidelines, we don't have to follow them strictly all the time, right? We can change it a little bit. But having that guideline there, it will help you make sure your petals are pointing in the right direction because not all of the petals on the cornflower just go straight up. Okay, and then in the center, you can still draw those um, those little stamen. So again, it's it looks complicated, but then it ends up not being too complicated once we break it down. That seems to be the trend. Grab my watercolor paper here. And there's a couple ways that we can paint this um, to have it nice and loose. And you know, I like to do the loose with you with the watercolor because it's very easy once you draw this to just do watercolor and ink and to have that more realistic. So I think it's a little bit more fun to do the loose ones when we're just going straight to the paper. So once we know the shape over here, we have the general shape of it, we can kind of do that loose. And I think that you know by now that one of my favorite ways to do loose painting is to just do water first and then to add the paint into it. Now with a cornflower, because they have so many different shades of blue in it, it's also possible to do a whole layer of just light blue first. So I'll just show you what that would look like real quick. Okay, and again, we have the general shape of it over here. So if I just wanted to start with that light blue, like that, and then I'm just going to go out and kind of give the illusion here of lots of petals by having a lot of these little um, prickly parts. And I'm working pretty quickly because I don't want it to dry on me while I'm doing this. Okay, And this doesn't have to be very exact. I'm just doing some prickles and things because I'm going to go back over it in a little bit with some darker colors and that's going to um, bring the detail in. So this is just our underpainting. Squiggles, fill it in. Throw a few more squiggles back there. Okay, and I'm just going to leave that and let it dry for a minute. And then I'm going to go over here and I'll just draw out this shape really, really roughly. Um, just draw a circle here like this, circle in the center. Okay. Okay. 
and then I can start putting my petals in one by one with just water. Okay, so drawing that shape out that we've been prad practicing with water, like this, and then grabbing some paint and dropping it in. And you can see that the water does most of the work there for you, right? And if you want to, you can push it out a little bit. Okay, and now what this is doing is instead of starting with that base layer, you're turning really each petal into this its own little painting. Because once the water's there, I can add a little bit of purple in if I want. I can add other colors of blue in, like that. And then each petal kind of becomes its own little painting. I can lift up some of that if I want to. Um, and then as you work your way around and you have the guidelines here, it starts to look really beautiful. Uh, because each of them has similar colors, but they're not all identical. Okay, so I just drop those colors in. And remember, with watercolor, we can always go back and add more layers and more paint. So it doesn't have to be just perfect the first time you do it. I'm going to soak some of this up so we have some different variations there. Drop a little purple in. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you're following along. Okay, so just with water. And if you're doing it from the side, it's exactly the same thing. Um, you're just changing the angle. So you're still gonna have this perspective, but then the, the painting technique is the same. Okay, and I think it's really neat to have the uh, water do most of the work for you, right? And then I'm just drying my brush off and going in with a little bit of a drier brush sometimes. Now, if I go over and start a new petal over here, because I did that right next to this one, it's going to bleed into each other. So that's something to be aware of because it might be a look you want, but it might also mess up your painting if you don't want them to bleed into each other. So just be aware of that if you do it. So my brush is a little bit drier again and I can just go and lift some of that up. Okay, let's do one down here. Do a darker one over here. Paintings look more interesting if you have a lot of variation in dark and light. So you do want to have those variants. Okay, so that one's a little bit darker. And honestly, because they're a little bit darker on this side, I can start to think like the sun is coming from here and the shadow is over here, right? And start to kind of um, prepare that illusion for the eye. Now, is anybody who's watching do any of you have the um, Instagram name of We Granny? If you do, let me know because We Granny on Instagram won the templates the other day, but I never got your address. So I'm going to write to you again on Instagram, but if you're here, let me know. I sent out the prizes to... Mitchell and Janet and Janine, anybody who's won a prize so far. Okay, so just adding these in. Do a watery one up here. And the nice thing about watercolor is that it doesn't go outside of where you put the water. So you already have those guidelines there. That's looking pretty good, huh? And that's just the first layer that we're doing. Cornflowers have lots of layers of petals and colors, and we'll get to that in a minute. Let's let that dry for a minute and go back over to this one. 
oops, <laughs> guys got my notifications there. That's funny. Um, okay, so over here, now that we have this base layer down, we can go back with watercolor on our brush a, bit, a little bit darker and add some more detail in. Okay, and then that background turns into, um, it adds a lot of depth and richness as we go ahead and add some more color and some more layers in. Has anyone here ever done Noom? I started doing Noom this week. That's what that notification was. Cass says, what's the difference between corn flour and chicory? Um, but they're just completely different flour. Wild chicory is only blue. Corn flowers come in a lot of different colors and they also are cultivated um, so that you can buy cut flowers of them also. You'll see them sometimes in bouquets. But yeah, just a completely different flower. They do have a lot more layers than chicory also. So as you go through and add these layers, you're trying to keep in the back of your mind that there's layers and layers of petals there. Okay, so with that one, you can just keep going, keep going, keep going. And then with this one over here, um, I think this is kind of the faster route and a little bit easier. I think this one looks a lot prettier. And then when we get to the center of that, you are gonna have just a light blue center. Okay. And we could make it just a bit darker on this side just to give it that effect of the sun shining over here, the shadow being cast over here. And while that's drying, we can go back and add a few more layers. And I'm just gonna layer right over the ones we already have. And that's just gonna give us a really cool layered look, which is what I want. That's what I'm going for. With watercolor, you can see um, through the layers if it's transparent paint, and I use transparent paint. So you can kind of see through them, and I think that looks really neat here. There we go. Just filling it in. So tell me in the comments, what's the most challenging part about watercolor for you? Because I think when I was starting, the, the hardest part for me was getting the water to paint ratio right. Um, I really struggled with that. And it just took a lot of practice to figure out what felt right. And I think it helps to use the same brushes as you're learning too, because brushes behave differently. And so just as you get really confident with one brush, if you jump to a different one too soon, I think that it kind of uh, makes it difficult to learn because brushes will hold different amounts of water and different amounts of paint. And then as you use better paint and better paper, you're also going to learn that the ratios change as well because good paper will stay wet longer. Um, and workable a little bit longer. And bad paper will usually dry pretty quickly and kind of get ripply and not have the greatest look to it. There we go. Okay, so I could keep doing that for a long time, just keep playing with it. Joanne says water is most difficult. Sandy says getting things to not look flat. Brooke says shading is difficult. Yeah, I can see all of those as being kind of kind of hard at the beginning. So the secret to having things not look flat is shading, honestly. So it's kind of connected. You know, you need to have contrast between dark and light. And a lot of people are afraid to have that. They want to keep um, everything kind of the same level of color. But see how this one looks kind of flat? It's because there's really only two colors there. And this one looks more dynamic because we have light and dark and a whole bunch of different colors. So that is an important thing to practice. Also the consistency of the pigment, you know, that's a lot to get into in these free lessons, but in the membership, we can definitely go into more detail, but about the consistency of the pigment, if it's too watery, it, you're gonna find it difficult to shade. You need to have a, a bit of a thicker consistency. Okay, so here in the center, 
you're still going to use that perspective and you're just going to kind of draw those parts in and it is still wet so I'm going to have to go back and add a little more detail to that later. And there's also some purple in these. Okay. So and then it's kind of rinse and repeat. Right? You can just you can keep layering, you can keep adding more detail, you can keep adding more colors, um, and you just keep going and going. And then the way you would add a stem and leaves to this is pretty simple uh, because their leaves are not very complicated. So Queen Anne's lace leaves kind of complicated. These are not too bad. You just kind of put your brush down and push it down and just make it a little bit longer than you otherwise would, like that. And do that on a couple different sides. Wiggle it a little bit, and their their leaves are kind of um, basic. You know, they're they're pretty easy leaves to do, like that. Okay. So that's it. That wraps us up for today. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you all. Have a great Wednesday. Bye.